How about that? That's better. <laughs> oh, that's too funny. That's too funny. Yes, indeed. Thank you, Michael. And Brucey. So there we go. Video has no sound icon appeared on Facebook. All right. Well, that's because I, t I, I was testing out something getting ready for today's show. And so I took this mic right here and I turned it all the way down manually, which I never, ever, ever do. Never do that. Um, because I wanted to hear, we're going to we're going to talk about um, about uh, stingers today, and stingers typically have some music, some some audio associated with them. So I wanted to turn off all the audio in the studio so I could hear what the stinger audio was, and so I turned off this mic. And of all the all the the prep I was doing on getting ready for the show. You would think I'd turn the doggone mic back on. Oh, my gosh. I guess that's what the pre-show is for. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Brucey. I appreciate that. So it was an idiot thing. Yeah. You've come to the right place. If, if, if you do things like that, then yeah. I know Otis doesn't, but that's okay. All right. Let's see. We've, we've lost something else in the process. Um, we're trying to operate today on three monitors and is that the one I need no that must be the one I was looking for yeah there we go all right there we are so uh, hello John welcome glad to have you John is coming us coming to us from the Caribbean he hasn't gotten blown away by any of the storms yet at least I hope that's the case and today we're going to be talking about stingers, which are a really interesting tool in vMix. And uh, I don't know, John, how you'd use one in a church, but <laughs> you might. I don't know. Um, but anyway, there's some, there's some fun things with them, so you might uh, you might glean something out of it. Also, vMix uh, released uh, apparently maybe last night or the day before. I wasn't paying that much attention. I think it was pretty been pretty recently. Um, an update to vMix 24. So the, now we are officially at 24.0.0.66. .0 um, if you use if you stream to Twitter, this will be important to you because this uh, fixes all the the um, the the one touch live streaming um, that used to do, go to Twitter and Periscope. And now, since Periscope is gone, Twitter paid millions and millions of dollars for Periscope, and then they just just let it let it die, essentially. Anyway, um, if if you're a Twitter streamer, then this will be important to you. Or if you use VMix Social, there is a dark mode to VMix Social. So there you go. Hello, Joe. Welcome, sir. It has been a while. I hope you're well. Joe is joining us from across the pond, as they say. So yeah, so uh, vMix 24.0.0.66 has got a couple of goodies in it if you are interested in that kind of stuff. There's Jim. Welcome, sir. Glad to have you. Glad to have you. Let's see, what else can we do here? Yeah, there we go. Trying out this new thing today. Um, VMix Social, obviously, yes. But um, I generally don't do this in the pre-show. I generally do it just in the post-show. So I thought I was just, I had a couple of extra minutes. Should have turned my sound on, <laughs> shouldn't I, Michael? Um, I had a couple of extra minutes. Tad, you're, you may be late, but uh, we're, we're still in pre-show, so you're really okay. Um, so, and then Ted's comment disappeared. Huh, you're not late. You're, you're okay. You're right on time. We're not going to start for another seven minutes and 14 seconds. So anyway, I don't, don't normally do this in pre-show. I save it for post-show, but I thought, well, let's just try it. Let's just try it. We'll, we'll, we might have some fun with it. Oh, I know what, what, is that it is now the new dark mode 
Can I show you the dark mode? I think I can show you the dark mode. Let's see, where is dark mode? Yeah, here is a shot that has dark mode in it. You can see this is the shot that's on the left side has got vMix Social. That's the new dark mode. And then on the right side, just that, that little teeny slice at the right side are the comments from the uh, Streaming Idiots Facebook group where we're also streaming this show. And unfortunately, the way Facebook works, um, you can't glean comments from a group. You can from a, from a page, but not from a group. So there we go. So let's see if we can uh, stop, not cause any trouble. Joe says he's getting by. The day job is hectic, but the video work has ramped up significantly recently. Yeah, I think there's been kind of a wave of fear that's kind of rolled over the, the world about the, uh, you know, the, the latest COVID variant. And, um, and that has spurred a lot of people to kind of lock down. Um, if they're not doing it, you know, because the government says they're just doing it themselves. They're pulling, pulling things back. And I get, and, and it's funny. Um, yeah, we ought to have a, just a COVID show. There's George. Welcome, George. Glad you're here. And uh, yeah, so COVID is uh, keeping live streaming. COVID has advanced live streaming 10 years in one. Yeah. A lot of good stuff there. What kind of time we got? Five minutes left. We're doing good. We're doing good. So yeah, today, um, today VMix rolled out dot sixty six, a what I call a dot update. It wasn't a major update, and they never update the uh, second and third octets <laughs> of the of the four groups in the. Uh, in the version number, we're at 24.0.0.66. So the second and third octets never ever get uh, any kind of any kind of joy. Hey, Ron, glad you're here. Ron is at, at um, hold on, don't tell me. I know it's gotta be balling down south and it's just getting accolades from all over the place because of the, the live streaming stuff that he's doing. Well done, sir. Good job. Ron, you're going to enjoy some of the stuff today. Um, if you're doing any replay with your football, we're going to be talking about stingers using stingers with replay. So it'll be good. It'll be good. What do we got? We got another four minutes left here. Uh, Tad says over on Facebook says, what SSD would you recommend for vMix replay storage? Tad, I am a big fan the PCs that we build, well, I'm not just a fan of it. I put my, my, my reputation on the line with it. The PCs that we build, we prefer to use an M.2 type SSD. And that's the type that mounts directly to the motherboard because we figure, you know, it's, it doesn't have to go through a cable. It's hooked up directly to the main line. Um, so we typically use a, um, a one gig, unless it's going to be something, uh, what, what if we have somebody that needed eight hours of replay? And so I think we put a four gig SSD, M.2 SSD in there for them. Now we've got our, uh, when, when we build a PC, we've, we're setting the main drive up, which is also an M.2 SSD. We're setting that up just for the operating system and software. So we'll use a 250 gigabyte and we'll take up about a third of that. So there's plenty of room, you know, for things to, to, uh, to go in the future. But, um, but we always have a second drive for, for replay. Now I, I see you're saying that, uh, Hey Corey, welcome. Glad you're here, my friend. Um, that he's running a laptop. So that makes it super difficult. Some laptops have internally the ability to take more than one, uh, drive, and they may have um, a bay for a, um, a, a three and a half inch uh, laptop type drive. Well, of course, they make a SATA drive the same size. So, you know, I would, I would, 
I mean, excuse me, a SATA S SSD the same size. So I would definitely do that as opposed to a, a platter drive any day um, for my main drive and for my secondary drive. Um, I'm trying to think. We haven't ever done any remote drives. They've always been internal drives. I'm just not a big fan of remote drives. There are just too many opportunities for something to go wrong, if not now, at some point in the future. So, yeah. And unless, here's the caveat, unless, the, the lap, unless your laptop has Thunderbolt, if it has Thunderbolt, then I would say you're, you're okay adding a remote drive um, via Thunderbolt. Get a little Thunderbolt chassis that'll take a, um, better that it'll take an M.2 SSD. Corey says he took out his HD and his uh, hard disk drive and put in a, a terabyte SSD. That's the way to do it, for sure. I had a, a Asus ROG, Republic of Gamers. It was a gaming laptop. It had two drive bays in it. Um, so one drive for the, the uh, operating system and software, and the second was a SSD that we used for replay. Um, sweet little machine. Sorry, sorry I sold it. It was, big, it was a monster though. It was big and heavy and had a very loud cooling fan. <laughs> so, so there we go. George says that he uses an M.2 for each. That's the, that's the ticket, I think. I mean, you know, assuming that, that you know, you've got the budget for it, um, I think that's the best way to, to do it until there's, a, until there's a vapor drive or something like that. So, so there. So let's see, can we, can we get that up there? Yeah, there it goes. And I wish I could put my Facebook comments in, but, but I, I can't, I can't. All right, let's get this show on the road. I've updated some of my shortcuts this week, so we'll, I haven't tested them yet. These are the shortcuts that open and close the, the program officially. Make sure I've got everything just right here. So um, let's get where we can reach that shortcut. That would be a good thing. And we'll, we'll give it a try. What it is, it's a shortcut that, um, that starts a recording and it also um, cuts to a video that has about 10, sting, 10 uh, triggers in it. We'll talk some about triggers when we talk about stingers in just a second, but let's see if this will work. Ready? Here we go. Okay, it worked. Ah, how about that? That was cool. It worked. Yay. Thanks to Martin K for the, uh, the intro. Very, very nice. And welcome to Clint. You know, Clint shows up right on time. Tell you what, he's got a peanut butter and jelly sandwich and he's, and he's ready to go. So, um, yeah, Corey, I think that looks like a great one. Yep. And, uh, and, and Tad, if I can help you, let me know. Sorry. I'm just kind of chatting off air. Sorry about that. Um, with some of the folks in, in Facebook and uh, I got to read Ron's here in just a second. So he's, he's distracted me with a, with a, I've, I've got a big, finally got my studio the way 90% of the way I want it, which allows me to have my vMix set up in front of me and then over to one side, whatever is the work of the day. And then behind the camera on a big 55 inch TV that I bought, long, long time ago. Um, and it's on a, it's on a stand. So it sits right behind the camera and on there, I've got the vMix social, um, which is unfortunately, it's just the YouTube chat. And then to the right of that, just about a third of the screen is set up with, well, I could talk about it or I could show you. <laughs> let's, let's show you. This is it. This is what I see across the way. Let me get the, the lower third out of there. And so you can see on the left side, the vMix social, and on the right side, the comments from the Streaming Idiots Facebook group. Now, we can't do comments directly from that group anymore because Facebook has said it's a privacy issue. 
you know, you can't, you can't take comments out. You can take comments out of a page, but not out of a group. Well, you know, if, if your group permissions just said <laughs> you might be used in something like that, it would fix it. Oh, the other thing that I'll mention, it, and we'll go back to this shot for just a second. You notice the new vMix, VMix Social. It's the dark mode, vMix Social dark mode. Let's see if we can go down here. Yeah, you can turn on the light mode down here at the bottom. And that's the way it used to be. Or we can turn on the dark mode. There we go. And dark mode is good if you're in a room like this where you're trying to manage the light sources and you don't want a big light shining right in front of you. Um, let's see if I, let's watch my glasses here. And if I turn this back to, well, you can't see my glasses, can you? Let's go back here. All right, I want you to watch my glasses and I'm looking into the camera and I am gonna go from dark mode to light mode. That's dark mode. That's light mode. You see, you, did you see it? Oops. <laughs> Not what I meant to do. Let's go back to dark mode. And it's just, it's just less, it's just less light, especially for us glass wearers. I mean, I've got a laptop over here that I ought to close. So it has less source of light. And then um, really the only thing is this light right here, which is a eh, I might try to get it just a little bit taller, but for the most part, it works, especially when I'm looking at the camera. Yeah, it's still there in the camera. We'll work on that. We'll work. We'll work on that. But hey, uh, welcome, Peter. Glad to have you. Um, Corey, the best way is to come on over on YouTube because I can see the comments and everybody else can see your comments. Um, we'd love to have you there. Corey is over in Facebook at the moment. We're inviting him to the YouTube feed, which is where all the comments are for the for today, at least the majority of them. Um, two things of note today. One is vMix just released vMix 24.0.0.66. That's important for you if one of two things. If you like would like the dark mode <laughs> in vMix Social, that's new and that's there. And uh, come on over to YouTube, Dustin. And, um, and the second is, if you are a Periscope or Twitter streamer, you know that for a little while, uh, when, when Twitter kind of discontinued Periscope, it sort of broke the API relationship between vMix and Periscope Twitter. Well, vMix has fixed that. So if you're, if you're a Twitter um, streamer, come on back. You can use the one-touch streaming. Uh, there's Tallboy. He's back in the chat. Very good. That's Corey. The other thing we want to talk about today a little bit more extensively is stingers um, and instant replay. But before we get into that, a, a little shameless advertising. Um, Eastern Shore Broadcasting, my company, is a vMix reseller. And we resell vMix to anybody that would like to buy it. Um, it's the same price as you can get on the vMix website. You can go to our website at Eastern Shore Broadcasting. Do I have a URL for that? Whoops. <laughs> Whoops, as they say. I hit the wrong button. Yeah, right down there is the URL, Eastern Shore Broadcasting, or I think the uh, QR code takes you there, too. I just set up those new shortcuts this morning. Oh, my goodness. I was going to start, start the show all over again. Anyway. The, um, and who knows what's going on down here with all this stuff. I'm, I'm, I have to work on it. Anyway, going back to this shameless advertisement, you can purchase your vMix uh, licenses from us for the same prices from vMix. Plus, you get somebody that you can call if you have a question. Currently, the way vMix handles their tech support, it's by email or through the vMix forum. The forum is great. There are lots of information there. If you're trying to figure out how, how to do something in your workflow, I encourage you to, to check out the vMix forum. Just go to vMix.com and click on the forums link. That's the easiest way to get there. Um, so yeah, we'd love to uh, we'd love to have you buy your vMix from us. And uh, you also get the vMix tech support. So you're not losing anything. You're just adding a layer, layer of tech support. If you're in the in the uh, in North America, it means you know we're just a phone call away. Anyway, anyway, um, stingers, stingers. Let's talk about stingers. Let's talk about instant replay for stingers. What is a stinger? Well, a stinger is 
a typically a video, and I'm going to use that word loosely, a video that will that will play as you transition from one shot to another shot. For example, this is a stinger. And you say, well, Tom, <laughs> that didn't look very good. No, it didn't, because I forgot I changed something on it and forgot to change it back. Let's, uh, let's see if we can't fix that real quick, and I'll show you again. Um, where is my stinger? There, oh, it's that big, bright green thing. And what happened was I basically, I just took the, the color key off of it. So let's put the color key back on it. There we go. So now when we do the stinger, the jaws of death close on one scene and they open on another scene. And if you, if you could hear, I think I have it turned up loud enough, you could hear the thunk as the jaws came together and then the whoosh as they came apart. Um, this is very simply, let's see if it, let's see if it'll tell me. Um, yeah, this is just a video, nothing fancy, just a video. It's not in my history, so I can't reload it and tell you what it is, but I think it was an MP4. Um, very short. Um, it is, um, well, oh, it's, it's 10 seconds, but most of that's green screen at the beginning and green screen at the end with just the jaws in the middle opening on the green screen. And the way the green screen part works, of course, is that I'm just keying out the background, making it transparent. So as the jaws come in, all this is green right here but it's been keyed out so that you can see me and then the jaws just close on me. And then while the jaws are closed, there's a transition behind the scenes and it cuts to whatever's in preview, whatever I have in preview, we'll, we'll, we'll cut to that. And then when the jaws open, whatever was in preview is now in program output and is there for you to see. Um, now to set that up so that it's, so that vMix knows it's a stinger, is a process. And so let's see if we can pull up a desktop capture. Yeah, that's a desktop capture. It's a little cluttered, but let's see if we can't um, make it a little simpler. And what we're going to do, you see my mouse down here in the bottom right corner. I'm going to go to the overlay button right here. And I'm just going to drag this up here so it's not as distracting to see infinity over there. And typically when I do this, it's going to start here. So it's going to start with overlay settings. Remember, you've got your four overlay channels, one, two, three, four. Each input has access to those four overlay channels. And those four overlay channels are also right in here. And so that's numbers one, two, three, and four. But we've also got now, used to only be two, now we have four stingers. So I'm going to make Stinger 1. I'm going to go to Stinger 1. It's a full screen. The effect is a cut. The effect duration doesn't matter in this case. But the duration that I'm concerned about is 2 seconds. Um, and even though my Stinger is 10 seconds, I'm going to give it a 2 second duration. We'll talk about that in just a second. And then the Stinger input, welcome Rafael, glad to have you. The Stinger input is just one of my inputs. It's a, it's a, it's a very short video. And I've said, if it's a two second duration or a 2000 millisecond duration, then halfway through at a thousand milliseconds, I want it to cut to whatever else it is. We can look at stinger number two here and see the same thing, full steam cut. Uh, we've got an effect duration of 2000, but it doesn't matter. We've got a duration of 2000. And then we've got something called hand stinger. <laughs> well, and the stinger cut point is at 1800. All right, well, I want to show you hand stinger in just a minute. <laughs> You're going to laugh. I laughed. You're going to laugh. All right, so we'll go back to this. So this is, uh, where is my stinger? Right here. This is the stinger. And as I click, well, let's just go back to this shot. Um, as I click... Well, let's make the desktop capture in both of them. As I click the stinger, 
it just does the stinger thing. And so we go from one to the other. If I put myself over here and do stinger one, then boom, you've got me just on a black screen. Um, and then we can do stinger one and you've got me back in the studio again. Uh, and that's just nothing but me putting whatever I want over here. I'm putting it in preview and then I'm clicking my sting stinger button. Now, let's go back to desktop capture for a second. And there we go. And I have just see the transition bar down in the center. There's a little teeny arrow there. And if you drop it down, you can choose what populates these buttons. And so I just said, hey, I want stingers one, two and three to populate the button. So whenever I click Stinger 1, it's going to do Jaws of Death. You notice there was a little background noise, background sound. And then, boom, we're back to the, um, the preview or multi-view shot. Um, desktop capture. By the way, you notice how I have the grid in the preview side over here with the orange top? And I have that grid. And I like to do that so that it helps me with this grid. This is a four by four grid. And it helps me know that my eyes are right about in the middle of the, of the third grid up. And my nose is right down the line of the two, two on either side. So it kind of helps me get lined up. I see a lot of podcasts and things where people are kind of over to the side and you think, okay, they're over to the side because they're going to put something up here at some point, but they never do. Uh, and then there are people that are moving all around. And so, it, you know, to heck with the grid. Anyway, you just see the grid. Just thought I'd mention it since you might be wondering. Okay, so let's go back. We're going to stinger one back to, yeah, back to me. Now, um, I said earlier, Actually, when I was thinking about doing today's show, I said, you know, I really want to do something in the show that will be um, <laughs> that'll be interesting, <laughs> but that will be um, that that shows how easy it is to make a stinger. So I took a uh, piece of oh, you can't really tell. What color do you think this is? This is a piece of fabric. Yeah, it's a piece of fabric, and it is it's not blue. It's not blue. It is, it is green. It is green. Uh, I promise it's green. Let's see. Let's do a stinger and we'll show you. Ta-da! It's green. Yes. And you get to see, this is what the studio really looks like. Okay, so we'll go back to, to me with my green screen, my, my portable green screen. But what I found out is, if I'll take my hand and the green, I can wrap the green around my hand. So now it looks like my hand is just sort of floating. Now, obviously we've got some shadow there, but you get the idea. Okay, a floating hand, that's nothing new. People have been doing that for years. You didn't just, if you just discovered that, you've been living under a rock. Um, but what I did with that is I draped it over my shoulder, covered up everything in my hand, and then I took my cell phone and I made a video with my cell phone of my hand coming up, boom, covering the screen so that it gives me a transition point. So I made a quick and dirty stinger out of it. So this is what that stinger looks like. Uh, let me take away the, um, the color key for just a second. And this is what the stinger looks like. Boom. Not very professional. <laughs> Not very polished, but effective. For those of you that missed it the first time, here we go. Right. You can tell I've been working in the art because I got calluses. Um, so I took that and I keyed out the green through the color key process. So I ended up with this. Now you can still see a little bit of the green screen. Well, we'll, we'll play that again. You can still see a little bit of the screen around there, but that's okay. And then I said, okay, so I'm going to take that and I'm going to make that stinger number two. So let's put something in the preview and we'll do stinger number two. Boom. There we go. And it cut over there. And you notice there was a little bit of, of audio associated with it. Well, I didn't record that audio as part. I want to listen to it because I missed out on it before. So let me grab a set of earbuds here real quickly. 
and we'll do Stinger 2 again. Uh, isn't that great? Now, obviously, I need to work on the timing of that. And we'll talk about how I added that audio to a clip that, I, you know, I guess it had background audio, you know, whatever my cell phone recorded when I was recording with it. But it probably was just air conditioner noise or, you know, a diesel truck coming down the street or something like that. It wasn't anything intentional. So I had to add the audio to it later. I also have a stinger, and we'll come back to that thought in just a second. I also have a stinger that is just audio. This is stinger number three. And that's all it does. <laughs> it just plays the ta-da. But think about that. Any kind of audio could be a stinger. And the nice thing about a stinger is that you can use things as a stinger, which would which automatically means it does certain types of things. Um, so let's go back to stinger number two. This is stinger number two. All right, so I determined that the way the hand got up to this, it took the hand a while to get up to the screen. I'll show you again. And and that was the same hand that I stopped and started the video with. So it it I, I didn't get the the full effect of coming up and coming back like I had hoped. But you know, you get the you get the idea. So in order to associate some audio with that. Uh, let me show you what I did. So we're going to go back to a desktop capture. Boom. And we'll go back to overlays. Uh, do we want to do that? Well, uh, we'll just check the, the Stinger 2 overlay. So the Stinger 2 overlay, it says Stinger 2 full screen cut 2000, 2000 hand Stinger. That was just what I called the file. And the Stinger point was at 1800. All right. Now let's find Hand Stinger right here. We'll go into Settings for Hand Stinger. We'll just pull those over a little bit. There we go. And see, here's the color key. We can turn it off and on. You get the idea there. But Triggers is, um, well, do we do it in layers? At first, I had the audio here in layers. Um, and what happened is I had no control over when it played. It just played. And I said, you know, it would be nice if vMix had a way that things could be <laughs> things could be delayed just a little bit. I was like, oh yeah, there it is, triggers right below it. So I created a trigger that says when this video, now remember, a trigger is an overlay. A trigger is an overlay. Uh, so when this overlay comes in, I want something to play. I want ta-da to play, but I want it, don't worry about this duration, but I want it to delay by 1800 milliseconds or 1 1.8 seconds. I just figured that was a, not the end, but you know, not right at the beginning because the ta-da is supposed to be as the, as you get into what it is. It just was the way I was thinking. Don't, don't pay any attention to me. I don't know what I'm talking about. So, we end up with a, a stinger number two, which is a ta-da. Okay, so we're making some progress here. Uh, yes, Ken Ricker, audio is definitely overrated. Definitely. In fact, you don't even need audio at all. You can just read my lips. Of course, you missed the ta-da part. Um, so that is, that's just a real quick and dirty kind of stinger. So you can, you can make a video you can designate it as a stinger, um, and if it has a green screen to it, well, that's a green screen behind me. You can't see it, but it is, I promise. Um, if it has a green screen to it, then you can... There it is, a green screen. So we'll just go back. The other one's a little faster, I think. Um, you can key out the green... And by the way, you can key out any color you want to. You could have an orange background and key out the orange. The key, the key would be what color is is in the is in the the, the content. Um, and you can take a video, and you know you can. I haven't tried it with a with a title. I'd like to try it with a title. Let's let's try it with a title real quickly. Um, let's go. Well, we'll do that in post show. Let's let's stay let's stay on track. Stay on track. Um, 
So the idea is that you, you've got this stinger. It's a short video. It covers up the screen and allows you to have a set change behind the screen. And there you go. Now, with replay, you think, oh, well, Tom, that's a lot of buttons for me to hit all that time to make it transition in and transition out and a lot of that. Replay takes care of all of that. And that's the beauty of it. It's really simple. It's drop dead simple. Um, yeah, I uh, can. I, I was. I tried to tried to do a, a an image sequence, but I didn't have the right kind of file. So that's my bad. Um, we'll, we'll we we may pick that up later. So we've got replay. Where is my my desktop capture for replay? There we go. This is replay. And I've got two cameras. You can see them in the top right-hand corner. Let's get Rooney off of there, Rooney, the NDI dog. Um, you can see the big me and the little me, and those are the live cameras. And then over here are the recordings. And I've got one recording I made later. Let's just get rid of that for now. I'm going to right-click it, remove it. There it goes. Delete one selected event. And I'm going to turn on, first thing I have to do with Instant Replay is go ahead and turn on the recording so that now we're live. Now we can actually, things are being recorded so that we can make clips of what we're recording. And so I'm going to put a little action in here, you know, fix, getting my makeup right, doing my lips, you know, doing my earbuds, which I don't need anymore. Um, and then I'm going to come down here and I'm going to do just a five second clip. Um, of the last five seconds. We'll have a little bit more motion and we'll do a 10 second clip. So I've got two clips here. Um, oh, and we need to set up the replay first. So let's stop the recording because we've already, we've already got some clips going and we're just going to go into the uh, instant replay configuration window. And this is the same window that you see when you set up instant replay for the first time. And you can see I've got two cameras set up here. I've got the bird dog and I've got a PTC optics camera. Uh, they're both coming in NDI. Um, and down here in the bottom left corner, this is the most important part, is I have the transitions. The in transition is Stinger 1. The out transition is Stinger 2. And the event transition is a cut. Don't worry about that one for the moment. Um, so I've got Stinger 1 and Stinger 2 going in and going out. I say, OK. So I've got that set up. We have pre previously, previously we have, previously we have set up Stinger 1 and Stinger 2 as the jaws of death and the hand. So we've done that process already. Now in replay, we're just simply saying, Use Stinger 1 and use Stinger 2. And by the way, you only have options to use transitions. You can't go straight to an audio file or straight to a video file um, as a transition in replay. You can only use the overlays. Um, excuse me. Well, let's go back and look before I misspeak. Let's go back to that look. We'll go back right here. We'll go back into settings and we'll come back here and you, these are just the transitions and then the, the four stingers, which are technically overlays. Um, so we'll leave that on stinger one. That's on stinger two. We're OK. That's good. We'll come back here. Um, and let's see. Let's see. Can we see how it all looks? Well, I'm going to show it to you two different, two different ways. I'm going to show it to you first in replay. So in replay, I'm going to select an event. I'm just going to select that five second event and I'm going to play that event. And you could probably hear it, but you probably couldn't see it. Well, you could. Let's try it again. So we're going from the instant replay. We'll do the, the 10 second one this time. And we're going to play the event. And that's something that was recorded a little while ago. We'll go to the other camera. That's recorded a little while ago. We'll go back to the first camera. And then we're back to whatever our live feed is. Um, let's see. So let's go back just to that shot. So 
if we were to do a replay in the traditional sense, you would have live action like this. We would play an event. And again, we might change the camera positioning during the course of the replay. And then when the replay is over, set up. We're back to live. Um, it's the replay part is the simplest part of the whole thing. Sometimes it's it's getting the well and, and the the uh, transitions, uh, the overlays uh, are are pretty simple too. I mean, you know, it's it's not it's not that complicated. Um, Chris, if you're just not here on time, man, you just you just miss it. But that's why we use the. Uh, the DVR function, so you can draw it back to the beginning and watch, but your comments are out of order then. Um, so by using a stinger that that was created for me by Martin K. Thank you, Martin, that was awesome. Um, and, a, and Stinger 2, which was created by me, which was bloody awful, <laughs> but but you can see that's that's how you would want to do it. So if, if you're doing it, say for example, um, as part of a sporting match, whether it's, you know, it's football or European football, um, soccer, what we would call over here, um, and we're, we're having a replay, we need some sort of marker besides the word replay to let the viewing audience know that we're doing a replay. And traditionally, stingers have been used for that. So if you do a stinger, you're doing what your audio, what your audience expects you to do when you're doing something different than what's live action. It's also a great opportunity to put up a sponsor logo. So let's say, for example, um, I use State Farm Insurance, and I really, really like State Farm. And so if State Farm was one of my customers and that we were doing a, a replay, I would say, hey, State Farm, you know, come on, let's let's let you sponsor. You're going to sponsor the replays. And so they'd give me their logos and all that kind of stuff. In fact, they might even do the video for me. But otherwise, I would probably start with a green screen in a video editing program, of course. Video editing now, not photo editing. Video editing. And, um, and then bring in the, the logo, maybe small, and then have it fill up the whole screen. And then have it come back and retract itself. Um, I might put some audio with that. I might spin the logo. I might say replay sponsored by across the top, something like that, or have it, you know, in the bottom right hand corner somewhere um, and use that as a sponsorship opportunity for sure. And you could change it every period, every quarter or every half or, or whatever your periods were um, so that you've got different replays. You would probably want to keep the, the, the replay graphic, if not exactly the same, very similar um, so that people aren't misled into thinking this is something different than what you've been doing before. Um, those are kind of the, the, the nonverbal cues that people have. Now, you can associate um, the audio with the Stinger either as part of the video file, like in Stinger number one. That is part of the file. And when Martin made that file, he timed it so that when the jaws of death closed and hit, there was that thud and then the whoosh as they opened again. With, uh, with Stinger, Stinger number two, I just threw that in there using a trigger. I didn't, it was not part of my, my recording. And it was not something that I added as a layer. I added it as a trigger because with a trigger, with a trigger, I could time out when I wanted the audio to appear. And I could also do more than one audio at a time if I wanted to. Um, let's 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 play with that for just a second. Uh, so we're going to do a uh, screen capture, and we are going to bring up the trigger. This is the hand stinger and we're right here in triggers. And so we're going to say on overlay in, we want to play and I'm just going to type it in here. We want to play. Well, oh, I see I'm in transition. Let's go back to all. 
So if I want to play, play would be right there. There we go. Uh, I want to play another sound. I want to play the um, dun dun dun. And I want to play that after. Well, I'll play it before. So we'll play it with zero delay. So we'll add this. And then remember when you do your triggers, the delay is cumulative. So if I want this dun 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 to play immediately, I have to put it at the top of the list. Whoops, let's highlight it and move it up to the top of the list. There we go. So it's going to play and then 1800 milliseconds later, ta-da, we'll play. Let's see if I did it right. So let's go for Stinger 2. There we go. There we go. So you can add all sorts of, you know, if somebody gives you a video on a thumb drive and says, hey, let's use this as Stinger today, and it doesn't have audio on it, shh, you know, you can, you can add it. Uh, you can record it. You can, you know, do, you, you can use your imagination and go, go crazy. Uh, yeah, they're talking in chat. Um, uh, George is going to do, he does uh, uh, BMX racing. And so he's going to do dirt flying up on the screen that fills the screen. Oh, that's going to be great. That should be great. And it should be fun to make, too. Um, and, uh, and Ed is seeing something similar. So there you go. So let's see. Let's, let me check my notes and make sure that we've got it. So we, we want a short video. Uh, if you've got a green screen as part of it, you know, you may, you may want to give yourself... Um, a little, you know, an extra second or two at the beginning and then an extra second or two at the end that is all green. Um, the um, we, can, we can add audio with a trigger or with a layer if, it, if we want it to come right at the beginning or it can be included in with the file. Um, we can start triggers at the transition bar and you've seen me do that. And oh, um, we can also have a stinger that cuts to a particular shot. So if I've got something that's not in preview, and I've got one set up right here, I've, I've got a stinger that's set up to go to the clock. Whatever I'm doing, it's a it's it's on my X keys, XK80 from PI Engineering. By the way, we represent x -Keys. If you need one, I've got them. And I've got one button that goes straight to the clock. There you go. It doesn't go back from the clock. I had to, <laughs> I had to trigger. I had to actually fire off stinger number one manually to make it come back here. But I have a button that goes from here, Jaws of Death, and then goes to the clock. And, and it's simply a shortcut. It's a shortcut that, let's see, can I show you my shortcuts? Of course, I can show you my shortcuts. Let's go in here to shortcuts. <laughs> Excuse me, goodness. And we're gonna find it by pressing the button right there, it's number 73. And it simply is, the function is, Execute stinger number one and make it go to input number 10, which is clocks. And if I wanted to, I could assign a shortcut to the input number, number 10, and then whatever I wanted it to go to, let's say, you know, it's clocks right now, we'll say, okay, okay. And then let's come down here and find clocks. And then I'm gonna just drop this camera in spot number 10, there we go. So when I hit that button, it's going to go to that camera now. Ta-da! There we go. Because now it's keyed to a to a button number. Uh, excuse me, to an input number, and not to an input name. Because uh, you know you can move the inputs all around, and as long as uh, the shortcut goes to that input, you're okay. But if it goes to the number, then it, it's go going to the number. Yeah, there you go. Um, All right, we have overrun our show today, so um, let's 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 cut at this point. We'll go to um, post show, and I'd love to see some of your comments in the post show. So um, I've got a new.
I've got a new shortcut for that, which doesn't do anything with stingers, but uh, I think it'll work. Let's try it. And we're back to me. And let's go to the post-show graphic. We've got a post-show graphic right there. There we go, 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 there we go. And let's see if we can't get it queued up with a very friendly comment. There we are, all right. Howdy, Alan. Alan Bunt, bless his heart, had uh, the, uh, I won't say it was the fortunate opportunity, but he had the miserable opportunity to be one of the very first guests um, on our show back in 2012. Way to go, Alan. It's only been nine years. Holy cow. Yep. So uh, lots of comments in the chat. Let's see. Ron has a stinger that's that he edited and called it a bds stinger and will not and vmix will not detect it as a stinger um well ron let's go through the steps again so we'll do a little screen share here and the very first thing i'm going to do is come down here to overlay after i've added my file as an input and we'll find stinger number four. And I'm going to give it a duration of 2,000, a cut point of 1,000. And the stinger input is going to be a video file that I've got here. Um, what video file do I have here? I added it down at the end. This one's a 10 seconder, isn't it? Nope. Well, well, here's a PNG file. Let's just see what happens with a PNG file. So we'll do a Stinger 4. Yeah, okay, so that's just a PNG file. Um, so, so it would work with a PNG file. It wouldn't have any motion to it, of course. You could add audio to it. Um, so I think there's probably a step you're leaving out. Is It probably was one of the... Uh, let's go back to that one just a second. There we go. Um, coming down to overlay. It probably was the duration or the cut point. Something in there you'll want to take a look at. Don't worry about effect duration. But you do you will need a duration now since it in this case it's it's a a, a, a still graphic I could make the duration uh, five seconds if I wanted to doesn't matter when the cut point is because it's a graphic uh, let's see let's not make that fifty two thousand so we'll go back to and we'll use stinger number four thousand one thousand two thousand three thousand four thousand five pow there we go so yeah something like that. That's going to be the key. Um, if vMix has it as an input, remember it's got to be in vMix already as an input. That's the other thing. Um, it can't just be flying around out there on, on your drive somewhere. So hopefully that helps. Hopefully that helps. Let's see. And somebody was talking, Ken was talking before, um, about a uh, an image sequence. Um, yeah, he was saying if 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 you've got an image sequence, which will be a sequence of PNG files, you know that are just the animation. You string them all together, and and they play as a as a smooth file. Um, if you put audio on the first image of that, it'll it'll have audio too. Um, with the caveat that it, it's got to be in the same folder. Um, there you go. Thank you, Ken. That's good. That's good. 
And what does George got going here? George says that we build our stingers in After Effect and export them as image sequence, going to use some dirt flying on the screen. Oh yeah, that's that's going to be really cool. Um, and uh, Hiken has says we created two different image sequences that have the same number of images. There you go. So they're the same the same length. Um, and using a GT stinger. Yeah, that was the thing I was going to try here. And of course, I know that. The um, let's go back to the uh, the screen here, and we're going to go to we're going to add an input. And as we add an input, let's bring it over here so it's not so distracting. We'll go to titles, and then there's a whole category called stingers. And these uh, are stingers where you can add different things already. Um, and let's just pick that one, for example. And it's got some images in it already. And we'll come down to number set 74. And as it transitions in, as an overlay, that's what it does. As it goes out, it goes out like that. And if we identify it as a stinger, so we'll go down here into overlay and we'll identify it as stinger four is now something called stinger five. Don't let that fi stinger five fool you. Uh, it's just a GT zip file, which is vMix's proprietary uh, graphics, uh, animated graphics file. And so when we do Stinger 4, and let's get something else on the screen besides that. There we go. Stinger 4 is going to cover up with that and then go to, to that one. Um, and these, these are also modifiable in GT Title Designer. Now, you've got to have 4K, VMix 4K um, or above in order to use VMix. Uh, GT Title Designer, and, and in order to use uh, Instant Replay, like you saw me use a little while ago, you've got to have, um, there we go. Oh, that's not where we wanted to be. Let's go back to Post Show. That's what we want. Back to Post Show. Um, so, yeah. And George is living on the edge with eight cameras replay. That's good. So he, oh, sorry, Rooney got in the way again. Rooney, get back in your pen. Only got swim image of each one's image sequences using triggers, not scripts or shortcuts. Hmm. Well, I don't have an image sequence here to test that with. But I'm guessing that there's still a way to do that. And yeah, and you know, this would work in a talk show as you're transitioning from a, a monologue portion to a, you know, a guest portion. Um, if you've got uh, advertisers, uh, that's a great way to incorporate those. Um, I'm trying to think, you know, in a, um, in a church environment, how you could use a stinger, but I haven't come up with a good, a good show yet. I mean, a good idea. And then I like this with the GT stinger, you can change them in runtime. That's right. And even connect them to a data source. That's right. That's right. And so they would be, uh, if your data source changed, they would change as well. That's good. That's good. I like that. I like that. Great comments. Great comments. Appreciate your comments. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen. Well, I have to go back to work. I hate to say it, doggone it. But it's been great hanging out with you today. If I can answer any questions for you about stingers or about uh, replay, next week we're going to do um, we're going to take a look at um, 
a, fi a five minute tutorial on how to use replay. So this is something if, if you are a vMix uh, producer, a technical director, and you want to um, put somebody else in the replay chair and get them to punch the right buttons, show them this video. This will give them the five minutes that they need to be 100% successful with 10% of what vMix <laughs> replay will do. Um, the other thing that we will we'll do next week is that we will look at if you've got vMix HD or below, um, there is something called video delay uh, that you that is sort of a poor man's instant replay, and we'll take a look at that too because I think that might be uh, that might be something that that you could work with. Um, so yeah, so there, there we go, there we go, there it is. All right, folks, thanks for watching. Appreciate you. It's my honor to be around this every day, and we'll we'll see you next week. Yeah, of course, you know, unless <laughs> unless I see you first. <laughs>